Hello, uh, this is the video clip about the boardwalk wheel uh, experiment. Uh, however, at this level, I'm just showing the first two stages of that experiment. And the reason I do that is because I want to make sure that the students uh, focus on making sure that these two stages work because they happen to be the same two stages that will be used in the traffic light controller class project. So this is imperative. This is a must for you to make it work. So let's start with the first stage, which is the timer, which is a circuit that will generate a clock signal. And this clock signal is just a, a, a rectangular pulse strain, which is high, low, high, low generated by what we call an A-stable multivibrator or free-running multivibrator in the sense that as soon as powered up it will turn on and off on and off what matters here is at what rate it does that and we're going to be interested in the period of that timing circuit the circuit is based on the chip 555 the timer 555 with some uh, uh, external components provides us exactly with that kind of signal which is used in digital circuits or to uh, enable the digital circuits to function to operate to um, make changes based or allowed at the clock in this case, the counter that we're going to use is uh, is an edge trigger device. That means as soon as the uh, the clock goes from low to high, if it's positive edge triggered, uh, low to high, only at that time does the counter change the output. So let's first look at how this circuit is built. As you see here, I want you to pay attention to the circuit diagram. Right, the circuit diagram, because this is how you build the circuit. You will not want to do just copying whatever is on a breadboard. You want to make sure you can make a relationship between the way I put it together and the way it is designed on a piece of paper. In addition, here you will see, for example, a number that you would not pay attention to. This one microfarad for C1 has been used only so that the computer simulation can give me a reading or changes at a rate that I can handle, meaning not too fast, not too slow. But the practical circuit requires about 47 microfarad and about, in this case, if you see the numbers, the, 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 the numbers that I'm using right now, it's about 15 kilo ohm for R2. And R1 being 1K, R2 being very large compared to R1. Therefore, the period is approximately given by 1.693 times 2 times R2 times C1. In this case, it's close to one second. However, if you don't have the 15K in, the, in, in your kit, then you can use a 10K with a 47 micro. And that gives you about 0.65 seconds as a period. If you use the 100 kilofarad, then the 10K, it gives you about 1.39. Obviously, I prefer the first one because it's faster. Therefore, I don't have to wait that long to, to confirm whether it works or not, right? It changes faster. However, for the one second, if you were to work for a client, you have to really provide the specifications needed, not something before, below or above. So... When you look at the circuit here, you see that pin 4 and pin 8 are connected to VCC, right? Pin 4 and pin 8 are connected to VCC. And then you see that 2 and 6 are connected together. Uh, you see that uh, pin 5 is connected to ground through a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. You will see it in the circuit. It's a yellow piece, as you see here, right? Uh, and then, of course, you don't have a capacitance meter to measure what you have. So hopefully one of the small yellow ones will do the job. And in this case, from uh, either two or six, you can run a capacitor and you will see it as a big cylinder here. Um, let's say 47 microfarad. 
from that pin to ground and then from six to seven you run your r2 resistor which in this case is a 10 kilo ohm and then from uh, seven to either power or to eight in my case i ran it to eight because eight is also connected to power so whether i connect the resistor to power or to pin eight from the the chip that'll be the same thing so in this case i also showed that the output is uh, is uh, um allowed to 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 visualize allowed allowing us to visualize the state of that uh, timer right so i'm using an led uh, protected by a resistor right in this case 220 ohm uh, obviously anything between 100 and 470 ohm will do right and of course the anode is connected towards pin 3 which is the output in this case that's the output and by the way, that's what we're going to use as a clock for the counter in the near future. So when you look at the chip, and you can read the marking with the indentation on the left side. Obviously, just let me see here. I don't know if it's going to be visible, but you see either a little circle at the bottom left or an indentation also. That means this is pin number one, and you go counterclockwise. Right, counterclockwise, so it pin one, two, three, four, then five, six, seven, eight. So obviously pin four connected to VCC, pin eight is connected to VCC, pin one is connected to ground, pin two and six are connected together with this green wire, and then I have the capacitor. This is an electrolyt electrolytic capacitor. Make sure the minus is connected towards ground. There's going to be a minus marking on one of the of the leads, all right? So that would be connected to ground. And the two, uh, and then this point one microfarad, which is from pin five, all the way to ground. And then we have the 10k or 15k, depending on what you use, from six to seven, and then the 1k from seven to eight right from seven to eight and then of course and in this case if i if i uh if i power up uh the, the this this chip uh where i connect the resistor the 220 ohm to the pin three and then connect it to the anode of the long wire of the the led and the short wire connected to ground you will see the led flashing on and off but before i do a practical implementation let me go back let me go next to the counter we're using the 74163 which is a 4 bit binary counter of course you can you can build circuits with just few gates that can make it in a way count in a way that you can control right so for example uh, 234 1011 234 1011 you can make it do that but in this case we're going to make it count only from 0 to 15. That's why we call it the binary counter. And in this case, <coughs> we don't want this chip to clear the output. We don't want the chip to load values from which the count can start, right? And just let it count from 0 to 15, right? And we want it enabled. So for these, for these cases, we want pin number 1 pin number 7, pin number 9, and pin number 10, all connected to 5 volts, right? 5 volts. Uh, as you see here, the output of the timer becomes the clock, which in this, in this case is negative edge going, right? Because that means it's from high to low, the count will change, right? For the count will change. And the outputs are Q, Q3, Q4, Q2, Q1, Q0. If I, or, sorry, in this case, it's QD, QC, QB, QA. QD is the most significant bit, right? QD is the most significant bit, which is pin 11, right? And 12 is QC, uh, 13 is QB, and 14 is QA. So when I, when I connect the LEDs to, the, to those outputs, it's going to show the binary count where QD is the most significant bit and QA is the least significant bit. 
And when I power it up, it will show the count from 0 to 15 in binary through the LEDs uh, exactly that way. So, again, here I have given you uh, some calculations, right, for the, the, the periods. So, depending on the case that you may decide. And I'm going to, uh, so I'm going to limit this video to just this these two stages. And, uh, and of course, I am... Uh, uh, showing what the output of the counter uh, is. I have put some space in between the chips only for uh, video purposes. In general, of course, you try to occupy uh, the space of fish efficiently, right? Because there will be a lot more chips, especially for the traffic light, that you have to take into account. And uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, now I powered up the circuit. Uh, the first thing that I have to remind you of, even though on a circuit diagram uh, under under uh, under multi sim, uh, as you see here, uh, there is this five volt on the side and ground, and the reason is that multi sim, when it looks at these chips, it does not know how much voltage is needed to power them up with. So this is what this will show. As far as the practical uh, circuit is concerned, in this case. The counter is a 16-bit, is a 16-bit chip, not like the, the the gates that you have seen before, which were 14-bit chips, right, uh, or 14-pin chips. So in this case, this is one, and it ends at eight. Then it goes on top nine, ten, clock counterclockwise all the way to 16. And of course, based on the same thing, that means the pin number eight goes to ground. This is a little bit hidden by this wire. Right, you see here the ground connection, and also pin 16 is connected to power because if you don't power up the chip, it will not work properly. Then, as I said, one, seven, uh, nine, and ten, these two pins are connected to power to VCC five volts. Then, to connect, to connect uh, the outputs to the LEDs. I also have to protect the LEDs with the resistors, right? But now what you ha what happens is that you see that there is an, a single in-line uh, package of resistors, right? This is the one you have here, and you have already one in your kit. Hopefully it has enough resistors to handle uh, at least eight, eight LEDs. Sometimes you have maybe one that uh, works only with seven resistors and you have to add an additional resistor uh, uh, from your kit to power, to 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 uh, um, to protect the eight LEDs right to limit the current and when you look at this single inline package you will see that however many pins it has when you can read the marking like in this case for example it's written 331 it means 33 times 10 to the power 1 ohms, or 330 ohms. The left one has a dot. That dot means that's the common point between all the resistors. That means the resistors are all connected inside that package in one terminal. As you see it here, the one that I showed you, you see that all these resistors are connected together internally at single point. And that single point is going to be connected to power, right? I have connected uh, that, that uh, only, well, in this case, in this case, sorry. In this case, I, I want to, because I was looking at the binary decoder, but in this case, I want, I want, I want that single point to be connected to VCC, 5 volts, at least for this test, right? Later on, you will see that for the binary decoder, I will connect it to, to, to power instead. So in this case, that common point is connected to ground, and I connect, of course, uh, the the, uh, the 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 LEDs to the resistors, and the anodes or the long wires are connected to the outputs. And as you see here, the way I put them together, this will be the most significant bit. This is the least significant bit. This is 15, then zero, one, two, three, four five, six, and so on, all the way to 15, and it repeats itself. So in this case, pin 14 is connected to the least significant bit, and pin 11, so it will be 14, 13, 12, 11, and 11, of course, connected to the left 
LED. So in that order. So it'll be pin 14, 13, 12, and 11. And that way you are sure that your timer works. That means leave the LED for the timer, even when, you, uh, when your experiment is over. But the LEDs for the counter, you can take them out, right? Because you're going to need them for the, the third stage. We don't need them for the counter. Once you know it works, then you can take them off. And then in the next video, we're going to look at how that video decoder works.